Hello and welcome back to another episode of HVAC System Design Tutorial with the channel of the World of Wheeling Design. In this tutorial, I would like to show you uh, some graphics of a building automation system and discuss about when we, when we talk about a main air distribution system like an air handling unit, what kind of uh, parameters are controlled and we can trend the data and understand how the system works and, and also how the performance of the system is. So this is a very helpful um, you know, topic and, uh, and mostly the uh, building uh, operators uh, need to have a specific trainings to understand the programming and the building automation system, understand how things are controlled in a building uh, with the main central uh, air distribution system. Uh, what kind of uh, parameters are monitored and also what are the controllability on all those parameters and um, and also there are other information we can share in terms of how the system works and interact with one another and uh, and how this ties into also the sequence of operation of a, a main air distribution system so by looking at this um, graph uh, the representation that you see in the in this um, page is basically as a reference to a air handling unit. The, the unit will serve an uh, entire building and also um, the way the, the graphics are showing in here is that this is taken from like a, a graphical interface of a building of a building automation system and there are these parameters are looked at. So if you look at the some acronym here on the left hand side on the top EA so this is in reference to the exhaust air coming out of the building and on the bottom OA it's in reference to outdoor air and also where you can see the, the a damper where it represents the mixed air damper so as you're very well aware the way the air handling unit works is that the air is recirculated into the building and mixed up with some percentage of the outdoor air and uh, with the same volume of the outdoor air coming into the building is exhausted out. So in practice, if you look at these three dampers here on the exhaust side, on the outdoor air side and on the mixed air, these dampers are all interconnected so that as much as the outdoor air damper opens up, you know, the exhaust air opens up and exhausts the air out. And the mixed air damper is basically also adjusted in such a way that uh, the total of the outdoor air and the mixed air becomes the 100% air coming into the line to the coil and to the supply fan. So basically uh, the air return, as you can see on the side on the top, RA represent the return air all coming back from the building. So either uh, the, the heat is uh, ejected to the building or the, the heat is absorbed from the building in the air stream uh, and that return air experiences uh, return air temperature um, which comes back into the line and as you can see there are a number of um, sensors that we need to have on our um, building automation system or install on the actual uh, you know, on the actual field where we could monitor some of the parameters such as return air humidity level as well as the return air temperature. So in this case, as you can see, the return air temperature from the building coming back is 23.34 degrees C. And, and also, obviously, we have uh, a return air fan. Uh, as you know, in a large scale air distribution system we have two fan in the air handling unit one is supply or discharge air fan on the bottom as you can see supply air fan and we have return air fan which helps with the air recirculation in the in the building in this case as you can see the return fan the signal showing that the fan is on and uh, the signal is uh, normally digital uh, digital signal so we have digital input and output uh, to show the fan uh, status uh, and obviously for the humidity and for the air temperature we have analog um, signals which we can receive and translate from the electric or uh, 
uh, from opacity signal into analog number. And as you can see, the return air temperature is provided here, so we can have the return air temperature set at 22 degree, and the realistic air temperature return is 23.34. So when the air coming back into the mixed air damper, and it mixes up with the outdoor air, and as you can see, uh, the mixed air damper position is at 80% uh, at 80 opening. And after the mixed air happens, we have another sensor here, upstream of our supply fan, showing what's that mixed air temperature. So when you look at the mixed air temperature here, specifically, you see that the, the temperature is 13.64 degrees C. This means that when we bring the return air from the building, we mix, up, we mix it up with a, with a considerable volume of outdoor air because the outdoor air is cold right now and it drops the temperature, mixed air temperature down into 13.64. And this is kind of in line with the mixed air temperature set point because we, we have requested the mixed air set point doesn't go below 13.48. So what's gonna happen is if, if the outdoor air temperature is getting too cold and this mixture does not work, meaning that the mixed air temperature goes below the set point, there's a signal sent to the mixed air damper to open the mixed air damper higher and close down the outdoor air damper to more, uh, you know, to bring less fresh air from outdoor to maintain the mixed air temperature here. And as you can see, the mixed air temperature of 13.64 after passing from the cooling coil, which is non-operable at this point because it's a heating mode of operation, after passing the fan, uh, you can see that the temperature on the discharge side of the fan is 17.11 degrees C. So you can see that there's, there's a jump of like close to four degrees C, equivalent to eight degree Fahrenheit, close to eight degree Fahrenheit of temperature change. And that's how we attribute that to the heat gained from the fan motor. So when the air passes through the, uh, or the air stream passes through the fan uh, enclosure and from the fan motor, you gain more uh, heat from the fan body and uh, and that's why we see the higher temperature. So this is a, there's an equation that you can calculate based on the CFM uh, and also, um, you know, the horsepower of the fan uh, to calculate what is the heat gain uh, from the fan can be. So this is all predictable. And then as you can see, the supply air humidity level is also provided here. On the bottom of the fan, as you can see, the supply fan is equipped with a uh, variable frequency drive. So the variable frequency drive right now is at 92%. And that's a, that's a device that helps the fan to be able to modulate uh, to higher or lower CFM or the air capacity and uh, we don't see the uh, sensor that sends the signal to this VFD uh, in this graphics, but normally based on the building demand on how much air is needed, uh, there's a signal sent back to the fan to either increase or decrease the, um, the air, air, air supply capacity. And then consequently the VFD uh, changes its uh, you know its voltage to to change the uh, fan uh, RPM to create higher or lower uh, you know air capacity or air supply uh, air supply to the building. So as you can see, there are multiple sensors installed on the on an air handling unit to control the condition. You can see the humidity. There is a humidif humidifier and there is a humidity grid where you can uh, you know, directly apply a steam into the uh, supply air upstream of the fan and uh, increase the humidity level. If the outdoor air is too dry and when it's mixed with the return air, your humidity level goes lower. And to maintain that set point, you can introduce the humidity or 
steam directly into the airstream. Cooling valve, obviously you can see the, the cooling valve is closed fully and this air distribution system doesn't have any heating and all its heating happens through the recirculation. So basically uh, the heat gain from the airstream inside the building would be the, the, um, you know, the function of the heat into the air and when it's mixed with the outdoor air you can uh, regulate the temperature of the return air and so there's no a specific heating coil or any heating uh, source to the air distribution system so basically the heating is gained from the building itself so that's pretty much everything in this graphic and you can see that what are the parameters an operator needs to keep an eye on on the control of an air handling unit or air distribution system and these are the information that you can also look at the, the trends the trends show the the changes in the state of any of this uh, of this um, you know parameters throughout the day or weeks or months so that you can you can point out or pinpoint any specific issues or if there is uh, you know abnormal uh, or anomaly uh, in the operation of the air distribution system you can analyze and and fine tune the operation of your system we can discuss about this topic in the future with more detail in the other areas and uh, I would recommend you to subscribe in this channel of the World of Building Design if you haven't subscribed yet and uh, uh, press on the bell button to see the new tutorial once they are posted. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next tutorial.